The concept of work is a vast topic and can differ hugely depending on your line manager, your senior leadership, and your immediate colleagues. The overarching culture of a company can be experienced very differently depending on who you are and how you perceive things. And after all, culture is formed by people and really the interactions that we have on a daily basis make up our own experience of the company culture. I have now worked for British, French and German companies in the retail sector and I've also interned and worked freelance for a media agency. So if you're thinking of moving here to work, then this video might be of interest for you. Okay, work-life balance. It is very important to note that work culture in Germany differs by industry just like it does really in any other country. And so if you're going to be working in something like, say, marketing, I think the idea of work-life balance will not necessarily apply. This is an industry where work and private life often blend together because you are often on location with clients, maybe a hotel chain, an airline, a restaurant, or some other kind of business. And because of this, uh, these kind of events are not always counted as work time. So the working hours are also pretty shady, even here in Germany with the strong labor laws, because certain companies will not count this as work time. And actually, these kind of sort of exclusive access to events and experiences are often considered a perk of the job. Similarly, if you are working in hospitals or in healthcare, um, I really don't think that you can rave about the benefits of work-life balance in these kind of industries. Having said that, let's dive in. Communication is so important. I do believe it is one of the most underrated skills in this day and age, and it will be a recurring theme throughout this video. Now, I'm going to need a little help from the British audience with this video because I have not worked in the UK for quite a while and I might not be completely up to date. But I do remember when I was still there that workplace banter was a thing. I'm not sure if PC culture has now killed this off, but much of what went on in the British workplace was lewd, crude and risky banter. You know, lots of sarcasm, lots of backhanded digs and just generally taking the piss. And I do think, in generally, it was all done in good faith. And it was, in many ways, a way for people to get through or to somehow sort of enjoy the workday if they were working in a rather you know, toxic or difficult environment. If things went south, there was a tendency to just take the piss and talk about the catastrophe in sarcastic tones, all the while remaining very cool, calm, and collected. Woe is the man who does not understand this kind of humor because you will spend a lot of time being very confused, feeling hurt and upset if you take things too seriously. In contrast, my experience of the German workplace, at least up until the current job that I have now, more on that on another video at some point in the future, but my experience has been that it is generally, you know, something to be taken seriously. If things go south in the German workplace, there is a tendency, at least there was at the multinationals where I worked, to find out who is to blame. The auto response whenever there was some kind of mistake or anomaly was to ask the question, who was it? Wer war das? Wer hat das gemacht? And you know, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with Germany, the auto response to this is ich war's nicht. It wasn't me. A constant dance of trying to place and trying to avoid blame. So this might offend some of you, but it really is just an observation that I've made during my 10 plus years of working here in Germany. If I had to describe the German workplace or, you know, some, not all, but some of my ex-colleagues and the people that I've come into contact with since working here, the most apt phrase to describe this would be righteous indignation. To be of the complete and utter persuasion that something morally wrong has been done. And because of this, it is fully justified to get completely outraged and upset. It seems that there is quite a lot of joy to be found in getting worked up and getting outraged at what this customer did or what that colleague said. Now, I have been here a very long time in Germany, and I would say I have come to appreciate Germany's direct style of communication, at least in the workplace. But when I think back, there were quite a few culture shock incidents. There is a very strong sense of right and wrong in Germany. You know, with many processes and tasks, there is a right way to do things, and any deviation from this way is considered wrong. And it is very important 
to let people know when they are doing things wrong. And I think the most obvious example of this is, you know, when Germans will literally say, they will just say, you know, das machst du gerade falsch, das ist falsch, was du gerade gesagt hast. Like literally translated, they will say, you are doing that wrong. That is wrong what you just said, or that's wrong what you are doing. This translated, especially to a sort of new language learner, is in English a personal attack. Like this is literally very rude. And I do remember apologizing profusely, you know, when I was confronted with this kind of communication, I was thinking like, shit, what the hell have I done? Was it really that bad? And I think it was just a great example of, you know, miscommunication because the response, which I usually got was, mm, there's no need to apologize. You know, it's not a big deal. Just don't do it like that again. And again, it comes back to the fact that, you know, it's very important to point out where things are going wrong. So I would say in the context of work, this communication style is highly effective. You know, if you really want to progress and learn and develop, you want to progress in your career, then this really is a great way to do it. You know, you get immediate feedback, you know where you stand, you know exactly what you need to do to progress the steps you need to take, but it's just not always very enjoyable. And I would say if you are somebody who is not particularly interested in learning and improving, uh, this is going to be a challenge for you. You know, the German workplace is not for sissies. In terms of communication style, it is generally a lot more formal in Germany than it is in the UK. Yet it's not uncommon for a manager to address certain people with the informal do and others with the formal z. And this could be for a number of reasons. Maybe they've just known each other longer. Maybe they knew each other before they started working together. And I do understand that in English, it's also possible to know who is more or less friendly with each other because of the way they interact, the words they use, and sort of their body language and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, just having this formal and informal language structure in German makes things really crystal clear. And in my opinion, just creates a bit of a weird dynamic. Having said that, you know, this has changed a lot in the last 10 years and many large organizations have implemented the use of do company-wide. So even top senior leadership are now sort of on an informal do basis with the whole company. So I would say the upside of this, you know, German attention to detail and this sort of not shying away from critical analysis is obviously that Germans tend to be a lot more efficient in the workplace than their UK counterparts, at least if we sort of, you know, exclude um, government uh, departments and the public sector. Um, generally, Germans are more efficient. They spend less time horsing around. They are more focused. And that is even though they take more holidays and more sick days. And this brings me on to the next important point of sick leave. So sick leave in German is common. Going to the doctor is very common. And coming into work when you are sick is not appreciated. It is not seen as a badge of honor. And most likely you will be sent home. Now there are two camps as to why this is. The first camp is, you know, it's out of compassion. People are very concerned for their colleagues. They don't want to infect anyone else on the team. So they're doing it out of love for the company and the team because if they came in and infected other people, it would actually impact the business negatively. Um, the other camp is maybe a little more cynical and it is the fact that it is very easy to get a sick note in Germany. Doctors love giving out sick notes. And on top of that, you actually are not allowed to ask employees what kind of sickness they have or why they can't come into work. So at least in the UK, to my knowledge, you still have to come up with a valid excuse, a valid sickness as to why you cannot work. So would I recommend working in Germany? Look, I tend to avoid giving recommendations uh, just because these are sort of experiences and yours might differ to mine. But it was very important in this video for me to give an open and honest account of the interpersonal interactions which you can expect when working in Germany. Now, this particular aspect is not solely based on my personal experience. I have had many discussions with many foreigners, and I think this is something that a lot of people really struggle with, and it's not talked about enough, which is why it was very important for me to go into it into a little bit of detail. So this is something that you really need to be prepared for. You will really need to check your ego because it probably will get bruised and damaged quite a bit in the German workplace. Having said all that, 
you know, there are a lot of benefits which I didn't cover. You know, the obvious one for me is pay. You know, compared to the UK, I can earn significantly more money in Germany, even after all the taxes and the deductions. There is ridiculous job security. It's quite difficult to get fired if you do your job to a good standard. You have very strong labor laws. You have things like subsidized travel, subsidized food, depending on which company you're working for. You know, there's time off, holidays, all that kind of good stuff. But this video is getting a little bit long, so I'll leave it there. I will do a part two of this at some point because there is a lot more to talk about. I would really like to hear about your thoughts on work culture. Let me know what it is like where you are living, and I will see you next time.